Welcome back to my channel guys. This is still your lovely host Grace Ojuma. The name of our channel is Intrigues of the Heart. This is what I love doing. It is my passion to talk about what concerns relationship and all that. Now one of the hitch I have here in um consistent presentation or consistent chatting with you all this is my environment, okay? It is an environment I'm proud of, but I wouldn't stop saying it's actually distracting. I try my best to, you know, come up here to talk, but, you know, I live in a kind of domesticated rural environment and we have these and that coming up. But please bear with me because no matter how I try to cope the sound, I still have one or two of these domesticated birds coming in. Please bear with me and let's just take the message, okay? Thank you. Today, guys, I want to talk about how to attract what you truly deserve, okay? How to attract what you truly deserve. I'm not going spiritual at all. I want to talk about the psychological and, um, could we say, the physical aspects of relationship. You know, when you want to enter in a relationship newly, one of the things they tell you is um, self-knowledge. And I think amongst all knowledges in the world, self-knowledge is the greatest of them all self-knowledge truly is the greatest of them because if you don't know about yourself you don't even know the kind of people to pair with whether at work whether in relationship whether in the marketplace you don't know your limits you don't know your strength you don't know what you should tolerate or what you can tolerate and you don't also know um how you be like you don't know what makes you tick what makes you think you don't know what you can be able to take in or what you'd be able to dish out to people so that is why self-knowledge is very important. So before I tell you about what and what and who you could attract into your life, I just have to tell you the truth. You must know who you are, okay? Who you are is in fact the greatest knowledge of them all. No matter what people tell you about, consider money, consider this, consider that, it starts with you. If you don't know what you really can be able to take, if you don't know your, your yourself per se, you wouldn't even know what and what you would even want in another person. It is when you know the kind of person you are, your values. In fact, when you know yourself, you would know, first of all, it starts with self-love. You get it. I, for once, I've been teaching this, reading a book per se and all, but even in all that, I haven't just known myself all in totality. I think I get to know myself when I interrelate with people more than when I just read books, read other people talk, or listen to people's experiences. It is from my own relationship with others that I get to know what and what it is that I should take, what and what it is that makes me tick or ten. So while talking about self-knowledge, you should consider one or two things my psychological, um, my emotional stability. It's going to be too broad for me to talk about emotional stability, but emotional stability helps me know how to deal with others. In other words, you could even talk about emotional intelligence. For my emotional stability, I could know my anger level. I could know how I respond to other people. I could even know how it is that I could be able to take a stressful situation. Now, if I am emotionally unstable, I don't expect the other person to be the one to bring in everything to the relationship. You know, some of us go into relationship with this thought of being the one to lay back while the other person walks. Relationship is supposed to be dual, except you're in a trial kind of relationship. So, a man and a woman. I'm not talking about the other type of relationship today, but if it's going to be between two people, definitely you should know what you can be able to take. Don't go there with this mindset of it is going to be her or him that is just going to work. We are all here to work. And I think the most luckiest kind of relationship is meeting somebody who is ready to work. When I know what I can be able to take, it starts from there. Then other things can follow like the power of communication. Now, if I am meeting someone who doesn't want to talk, who is not ready to communicate, I am in trouble. Because you will talk and talk and talk. You keep walking and walking and walking. But the day you decide to just lay back and withdraw, what happens? That's when you know that you're dating yourself in the relationship. You're just dating yourself because you're putting in too much work 
while the other person is there doing the blame games, the other person wouldn't even own up to their uh, at their weaknesses. The other person wants all the self-respect. I tell you the truth. The worst kind of person you would ever date is a manipulator. Now, a manipulator also have the traits of a narcissist. It is a very, very, very wrong place you wouldn't want to be. Because these people only see the wrongs in others. They always want to fault the other person. Now, if as a leader or one of the quality of leadership is own up for your own mistakes. I own up for my mistakes because I want to learn. If you don't own up for your mistake, it's going to be a problem because it is only the other person that is wrong. It is the other person that should apologize. You're egoistic. You can't even apologize. You can't ask for forgiveness. You just want the other person to be working and working. This is because you just feel relationships should be only about the other person. Two people who are ready to work are the two persons who are going to be in a very healthy relationship. Now, for you to know that a relationship is not even healthy for you and it is not what you deserve, you have to have a self-knowledge of yourself. If you have a self-knowledge of yourself, that means you respect yourself not to tolerate any kind of abuse at all. Now, there are verbal words that people should not use for you. When they use it on you, it turns you down, it brings down your self-esteem. But once you don't know about yourself, once you don't know your limitations, your strength and your core values, what happens? Anything goes. Whatever they tell you, you are always giving excuses for the other person. Why they themselves? They know what they are doing. You know, narcissists actually know the weaknesses of other people. Do you know that? Because they already know where to bite you hard and you fall for it and begin to blame yourself. Now, for me to start attracting what I deserve, I must respect myself, I must value myself, and I must love myself. You must love yourself enough to know that, no, 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 I can't take this. Now, this is something I cannot be able to take. Money cannot buy my peace of mind. Money cannot buy my happiness. Money cannot, no, some, for, for some people, happy, happiness is actually money and all. But I tell you, money is primary, sorry, secondary to what I tell you about. Communication does it. There are times in which you just need to sit down to ask yourself questions, you know, to work things out. But if you are with somebody who is not even ready to talk, but they blame the other person, and, you know, what they do is mind games. Ah, there is nothing so bad like mind games. So if you date such people, you are in for trouble. So I don't want to derail from the topic of today, which says how to attract what you deserve. So if you have the self-knowledge of yourself, you will begin to know what you deserve immediately. You know, one, one way to get this in is as we start relationship, we got to take it slow. I don't actually take away the place of let me pray to God, let God help me. But as they always say stuff about the choice is in your hand. We don't have to just blame the creator always for the choice we take. Okay, that is the reason why you have to go in with your eyes open. Remember that adage that says love is blind, but marriage is an eye opener. It has to do with things like this. In as much as I want the best for myself, in as much as I want the best relationship, I wouldn't want to repeat my, my, my mistakes. It must start with myself. What? Okay? I must understand myself. I must understand what makes me tick. I must understand the way I respond to stress. I must understand the way I talk to people. I must understand my anger management level. So, so important. I must understand my communication level am i open to communication am i someone who doesn't want to talk i must understand when it is that somebody is actually stepping on my toes and i need to leave i must understand gaslighting i must understand when it is time for me to move on i must understand that wow this that is about to happen is going to get on my nerves you know some people give this excuse for people that oh, maybe this is this this is that let me give her time she's gonna change no one is actually perfect in the context. But if you love yourself and you know what you deserve, because this is what we're talking about, you must be able to do what? Self-love. And they always say that self-love is actually the greatest form of love. Because if you are a codependent and a needy person in a relationship, if you don't love yourself so much and your partner is not giving you what you want, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to become so unhappy, okay? I've been there and that's why I can be able to tell you one or two of these things. If you don't love yourself enough and the other person starts misbehaving, sometimes you feel like, whoa, life has ended or the other part of you is gone. But if you are a little bit dependent, 
independent sorry you would know it is time for you to move on yeah you tried your best you wanted it to work out fine but it didn't it is not always about the other person that is why i started with the knowledge of yourself if you're coming into a relationship thinking the whole work is just all about the other person you are in trouble okay i would like to talk you know in my in in the, my next video about why people act the way they act Sometimes you're not to blame for someone's upbringing. You're not to blame for someone's uh, uh, outlook on life and all. Some people were brought in a very toxic environment. Some people were brought up in an environment which was devoid of love. Some people were brought up in an environment where the parents never even came together to love themselves. So definitely, they can't give love when they are not even in love with themselves. It starts even from the womb. The woman is not happy. Her child, she can't even communicate properly with the child in happiness. Why? Because she's not happy. Some people were brought up in uh, degrading environments where their parents always looked down on them, insulted them, you know, belittled their abilities. No confidence, no courage. So definitely these people did not receive love to an extent. They did not grow up in love. Definitely they cannot give love. If you meet such people, you're in trouble because you want and you want to attract something good but you're meeting somebody who is not even ready at all this person is laid back wanting you to do the all but how can a relationship work they call it relationship yes it starts with a relationship with myself actually but how can it work when i am the only one doing the other thing or this other person is the only one doing everything while i'm just laid back because i don't even know what the definition of love is so in as much as your partner has a whole lot of work to do you also as an individual has a whole lot to do own up to your mistakes own up to the wrongs you do own up to what you do that may not be nice so guys before i end up this video i'm going to put um in my comment section you're going to see uh, a link leading you to my books i have one link to amazon and the other one links to Okada book on um, in the Nigerian uh, platform. So do well to click on them and to get the book. The book title is Relationship, Dating and Marriage, The Things They Never Told You About. Okay, It's actually a simple read and the money is affordable for all. I think you will get more from, from them than just even everything we have here on the video. So for now, I'll say bye. Thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to drop your suggestions. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share and like. Do not forget to turn off the notification button. Please turn it off so that you will be one of the first to see my video. Like, Intrigues of the Heart is live now. And you get to listen firsthand on the topic we have for that day. So thank you very much, guys. It is still your girl, Grace Ojama. Bye-bye.